Yes, we're live. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome from New Zealand for all our international uh, viewers. Today's been a great day here in Whangarei. Thank you for uh, joining us on the live stream. Hopefully, you can get something out of what we're about to talk about, uh, economic recovery. Every now and then, it's good to talk about how we're going to get out of this. As um, This week, I went downtown. Actually, yesterday, I went downtown, noticed big lines at the post office, and um, the restaurants are open. People are getting... Um, takeaway food waiting outside for it and streets are virtually empty so it's not i mean level four was quite empty but still with level three we still haven't gone back to as normal as we were even though the restaurants are open and i mean even some of the businesses are open and so on uh because the longer we stay closed the more debt will go to us to our country but not only that to every individual uh business owner every worker uh, who's not able to pay his bill, every um, landowner uh, and landlord who's not able to pay their bills on time. I mean, even I had a call from the old power, power, power company saying, hey, uh, just want to give you a little note to say, you know, ring to say, hey, uh, it's, it's getting up there a bit. And I'm like, you do realize what situation we all are in. But I guess she got the, you know, um, my, um, my caller got a, tap on the shoulder from her bosses to say, hey, you're at home. Here's a list of people to call up so you can keep working for your, you know, otherwise she can't take a, um, the old box to say she's called someone, spend that five minutes and get paid for that. So this is the situation we're in. And so now we, you know, we're going to once again talk to our amazing um, guest, uh, Jared, to talk about economic recovery. I sent him some video um, some video to look at about, uh, I think it was Richardson, the finance minister, to have it thinged over because I get bored with, um, sure, I mean, I run a business, I understand the, um, the practical side of it. When it comes to actual, you know, taxes and all that, I kind of go, oh, dear, somebody else, please. So we're going to talk about that today. So thank you again, Jerry, for joining me. Uh, it's always good to have your friend, um, you know, popping in and making yourself available. Yeah, no, it's great to be here. And what a fantastic uh, topic to discuss, given uh, that as New Zealand is one of the few countries to um, be able to open up safely, that we now face this you know, a few big challenges, you know, one is, you know, how to do it, and that got announced today. Uh, but then, of course, the other, you know, um, longer term aspect is, uh, what's the kind of financial impact and damage from from mm. all of this? And uh, New Zealand's not alone, you know, um, every country is going to have a an, an impact of some, some degree. And uh you know it's going to be uh interesting to see um how the government tackle this not only because you know the the, the budget was was um uh coming up in, anyway uh, but it's an election year as well so an election year makes it uh all the more interesting um as to how they're going to handle this um uh there's there's the um there's the expression that that i've heard which is an old expression um so i'm not too sure how many people will be familiar with it but it's the it's the term of the hospital pass it's when you it's when you're playing a say a ball game that's a passing game and someone throws you the ball mm. and you know there's this there's this thing of you know did you not catch it properly yeah um, or was it just a terrible pass yeah and, um, and the guy gets wiped out <laughs> yeah and and you know and, and it might have been that you know that that pass was was the pass uh, you know i i don't watch um you know a lot mm. of sport um in the last few years and of course there's none now unless you want to watch repeats Mm. Uh, which was just painful anyway. Uh, and it's kind of like, you know, I've watched so many games where where your team, they, they, they were, you know, had this opportunity to win, 
and, and someone passes the ball and it either goes really, really well or that's the end of the game, they lose. Mm. Or the other, the other, you know, um, thing that I have seen is that someone throws a terrible pass and um, they weren't winning. They were ahead. You know, there was nothing to worry about. Someone throws a terrible pass and then someone intercepts it yeah. and then races to the other end of the field. Nobody else can catch up with them. And then they come from behind and then win, you know. Yeah, the um, old intercept. The old intercept. So, um, you know, th that's, you know, there's high stakes involved here. There's, there's high stakes for the future of the country. There's high stakes for the current government. There's, there's high stakes for, you know, um, the election and, and the election issues. Um, there's high stakes around our relationships with other countries internationally. Um, uh, the, and 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 then over the top of all of that is that there is there is still the fact that there's this pandemic to mm. to be on top of both from a domestic point of view and from an international point of view. There's you know what's the long term solution? Vaccines? How much is that going to cost? Um, how much is going to be dedicated financially to doing that? You know, could could our opening have been premature and then we find that we've got to go back into lockdown again and so it and, and so then that you get this doubling tripling impact of the economic effects as that is as everyone stocks up again um that to get closed again could have this even worse you know, um, economic impact so it's a, it's a very high stakes game that's uh, being played there at the moment this um I didn't. I wasn't aware of it, but uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, there was. I was just. It was told to me by my PA yesterday um, that there was discussion about giving each Kiwi uh, thousand uh, adult thousand dollars, and every child, you know, of a five years old or something, uh, five hundred dollars to um, to spend, you know, in in their region or locally in um, in the local businesses. Now. When I heard that, I was like, okay, that's kind of interesting. And he, you know, he's mentioned, well, how would they do it? Do they give it to them in their bank account and stuff? And my idea was like, you know what? Give them every, give everybody uh, a green card, which is what we already do to um, uh, people on the, you know, on unemployment um, when they, when they really desperately need it. And they use, it's like a visa card. You just go in there and you put in a couple of numbers and you got your cash. So, but then if you were going to do that, my next thought was, because he was like going, well, what if they don't spend it? And I go, okay, well, then you do a time limit, right? You say you give it a month. So to, and you only, because you only let it spend it, bring, you know, in your own area, right? then that money only goes in your own area and it's got a time limit and only you can use it. So let's see, probably for, um, it amounts to what, like about 3,500 for a family of uh, four, like, oh no, say three kids and two adults to spend in a month. That's a very, very uh, interesting way to, um, to implement growth. Do you think, that's something that they should look at or they should go ahead with because, you know, it is a lot of money um, for, you know, it was like something like about $5 billion or something they were thinking. But that's something that would come out of in, um, that people's own money anyway because it's taxes that the government already has. It's not like some special government money that they have, but it's actually indiv the individual citizens' money that they have. Um, so they're not actually spending anybody else's but the people's money and the people are only spending on themselves and, and you know local business to boot it again what do you think of that you know i remember uh and the reason why i'll, I'll um i'll use this example was is because i was actually in australia at the time of the global financial crisis and the labor government at the time in australia um, effectively did that they they kind of gave um, everyone you know roughly nine hundred dollars and all, all that really happened was that there was this 
absolute boom in people be buying large screen TVs. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this is where one of the big challenges we have is that there's not enough understanding about how the economy works. Mm. And one of the big problems that we face, and, and, and this is part of the reason why, if you, if you want to kind of tease it apart, the reason why people kind of talk about things like, should we put a time limit on it? Should we restrict it to certain types of goods or services, et cetera, et cetera? Who should get it? How much, et cetera? The real, the real problem is that, and, and this was alluded to in the finance minister's kind of preamble, you know, warm up for the budget, mm -hmm. is to say is that, you know, our, our economy, and not just our economy, but, but the global economy has, has got some major, major challenges mm -hmm. that it was already facing into before this pandemic. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's, here's a few of these challenges. One is, uh, you know, you could do this, this, you know, have, let, let, let's say it's a $5 billion pool of money that you, you spread out across the citizens, give everyone a nice little bump. But the question is, is that where is it going? Mm -hmm. Who's it going to? Who are they? Where's that money then flow through to? And does it actually really give the economy any genuine benefit? Mm. Um, I would argue that um, giving people a cash injection, that, inca that means that for some people, they rush out and go and buy a brand new plasma TV. Mm. You know, is, is that really, you know, a, a good economic outcome? Because at some point, um, if that happened these days, is that you would, you would probably run out of TVs because they're all mm. important. Um, so, so do we really want money to be being spent on importing things that are difficult to import and might actually become in, in, a, in a, you know, and you create this kind of like strange um, shortage? Uh, the, the other thing is that, you know, I think a lot of people are struggling with everyday sorts of bills. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, Let's let's also look at this. So so one argument could be to say, well, maybe let's give people some relief around things like rent or power bills, mm. water bills, electricity, maybe even food, um, or or maybe we encourage people to buy from you know from local retailers. Uh, but let's come back to that because because there is an element of that local local business um, that that is um, got got potentially some merit, but. The, the other thing that we need to look at is that whilst everyone um, has been in lockdown, uh, there's been a lot of businesses that have been operating. Yeah. Your power, your electricity, your mm. internet, um, mm. your supermarkets, uh, and so forth, you know, other essential services. And, it's, and at what point do we have to ask the question about um, the the uh, almost monopoly that those various um, sectors of the economy have had in terms of either literally being a, a monopoly, i.e. with supermarkets, then all of your small grocers, your farmers markets, hmm. um, your local dairy and so forth, they've all been kind of like cut out of the picture and it's just been up to the big, you know, main supermarket yep. chains. Um, and then, you know, with your other services, it's like they're such essential services that we pay for. It's kind of like, well, um, you know, uh, you know, if you had to make a choice around your bills, you know, are you really going to start to turn off your electricity and your water? And and whilst those businesses have got, in effect, like a, a kind of like a fixed amount of um, their revenue still coming because it doesn't really matter what, what happens. And in fact, in some cases, they're probably um, um, better off because um, or, or the the uh, the uh, you know the usage of these things has, has shifted. And that's and this is not to say that they haven't necessarily done it bad, but I think that there needs to be a lot more transparency around who's done well out of this and who hasn't and and what's the kind of like social cost um 
that needs to be paid and and that uh you know you know perhaps the other alternative here is not necessarily to to give people um, a cash grab but maybe um, it's that uh, there needs to be some way of delivering um, reduced costs to people mm. generally through these services that have been mm. doing really really well so so why is it that your local baker you know is going bankrupt but you but your new world and your countdown and your yep. pick and save and so forth they're, they're all good you know, like they're, they're all, you know, they're, they're, they're not at risk. So I think we face a number of really complex questions around um, how money flows around the New Zealand economy. How is it going to flow um, whilst we're sort of in this, you know, little New Zealand bubble where, you know, you don't have um, a lot of people coming into the country for tourism. So a lot of this, you know, apart from exports, and we've still got imports coming in mm. um, and then we've got money circulating around with inside New Zealand. And, and I think we, we, we need to have a lot more social debate around how money is flowing around New Zealand. But one of the um, you know, big, big questions that's happening overseas, for example, is that uh, uh, lots of you know, really big companies in the US have been beneficiaries of um, you know, the, the subsidies and so forth that mm -hmm. they've been handing out. Um, we've had, um, you know, uh, lots of businesses in New Zealand that probably are in somewhat of a similar situation. And, and, and of course, everyone can go like, you know, well, our revenue is down, so we're not making mm -hmm. as much money as what we were. Yeah. Um, but the question is, is, which is, you know, like, well, given that if we're all in this together, if we're all in this together, mm. then how is it that we, that we can have lots of really big winners and then lots and lots of losers? There seems yeah. to be something not quite right. And um, and whilst it sort of seems on the surface sort of like a situation, I, I know that there would be a lot of people politically that would be really, really terribly against, you know, just giving people handout. And, you know, they've got lots of valid and, and, and probably not yeah. so compassionate social long-term thinking um but i think that sometimes th there is a point around this because one of the challenges is that when you when you hand out money then um uh, you know one of the earlier things that i did hear some weeks ago you know when this was first being discussed was for example that a lot of people might just grab the money and if they can they'll just put it on their mortgage or they'll just put yep. it on their rent and if you're renting, then there's pretty a, a reasonable chance that that money is then going on the owner's mortgage, right? And so then the money just flows back to the bank in terms of interest, you know? Right. Or in terms of, you know, there. So it's kind of like, you know, let's be really careful to make sure that that $5 billion doesn't end up back in the back pockets of four mm. or five, you know, big um, companies or, or, yeah. or, or, or banks individuals in, 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 this, um, in New Zealand. Bearing in mind that a lot of us um, New Zealand's banks are actually owned by Australian banks. Right. And so um, by giving $5 billion um, to, uh, to people, and if, and if a lot of people put that on their mortgage, then um, that's just going to, um, we're just sending that money back to Australia. Right. So, I mean, if that's the case, how, I mean, you talk about like you know, um, you know, people on the right were probably saying, "Well, we shouldn't do this," and people on the left saying, "We should do this," and you, you're cutting it down the middle, saying, "Hey, we're not thinking about how the money's going to be spent." But I think what what concerned me was seeing smaller shops not being able to be open now because they don't deal in food, um, like in the last four weeks. But you know, and all. I noticed that there was um, in the Indian community and the Chinese community it was like they were saying like online they were saying well why can't our Indian size shops be open because they provide services as well as vegetables and meats and so they had that question uh, you know situation that they, they were discussing online and you know because it that, that I, even locally I noticed one of the shops just wasn't allowed to be open you know it's a large grocery grocery shop provides everything from meats to um, you know butchers and stuff 
I mean, from, sorry, from butchers, a butchery, butcheries weren't open. Like a lot of butchers weren't open. So, so there's a lot of animals that, you know, I mean, for those, you know, who are against animals, they'll be happy, you know, meat and stuff, they'll be happy. But for the rest of us, like, you know, you think about all these um, animals who will probably end up being sick now because, you know, their time or process. So there was no, um, I noticed that there was no uh, meat, frozen meat goods for the last, I think it was a week three to week four. There was, there was hardly any food. Uh, in the process now. So last week when they opened up, the processing started again. So there's um, meat was still there. Uh, and not only that, so when we went into lockdown, the smaller butchers who had already processed the meat ended up sending the meat to be frozen, right? So now we're getting a lot of frozen food because of that. But those people that work in the factories that provide that sort of stuff, I mean, I've worked, I've worked as a factory over in a, in a, you know, in a biscuit factory, you know, processing, you know, and providing someone who is now provides to um, in New Zealand. So that sort of small um, factory that just mum and dad factory isn't open, but they provide to a huge, huge element, let's say that in New Zealand, who, you know, would use, buy up all their, uh, all their goods. Now all that stuff for like, say a whole month's worth of food pri that was made prior to, uh, to the lockdown, sitting somewhere so that's going to get wasted unless they do like a you know reduced reduced uh pricing on it to get rid of it so you've got all these uh processed food that is locally made and you know and by process i mean not like uh factory chips and stuff eater and all that sort of you know bigger cadbury chocolate but i mean so all the sort of um pre-lockdown food that's been sitting in the factories and house. I mean, like they were talking about the oil over and uh, it's going to, they had to pay somebody to store the oil because nobody was using the oil. Same thing in New Zealand would be the case because we'd be not using the oil as well. Um, and so with all these banks, uh, you know, the, yeah, the thing is like, I, I'm, the debt we're going into, right. It's, it's, it's astounding to me that I like, I know, uh, I mean, I kind of, as a libertarian, I kind of go in the middle and go, well, I can be a soft on this side and I can be a hard on this side. And I look at things and I go, well, how does, how does it affect when we come out of this? And my mind is always on, okay, I understand we need to go in lockdown, but what is the full horrendous effect of being in debt? You know, and a lot of people, I mean, we know, we know what happened during the depression people jumping out of windows and stuff. And even in Japan, there was all this, you know, during the, um, um, the last, you know, the last situation. Uh, but there's things that will, that will um, said in situations that we won't be hearing about because it'll be just like, oh, he was depressed. But because we won't be able to tie it into that this is because of this, because of money, because of the worries of not being able to provide for the family. Either as a single mom, single dad, or as a couple, and so on, um, or for yourself, right? As if you're just a guy by yourself or girl by yourself, doing your, going to McDonald's or going to BK, which doesn't work now, right? Be, uh, from what I hear, BK is gone. So that that income for you is gone. You, you're expected to pay your bill. You're expected to pay your rent, um, your uh, all your bills. But not only that, you're supposed to buy food. Now, the other, which leads me to the fact that so you're there now, you're unemployed. Wounds isn't open, right? So our social development provision for the unemployed isn't open. You know, we noticed that the other day, uh, we're, yesterday, we we're walking past down, and I didn't even notice it myself, but my, uh, my, my PA goes, I need to, oh, they're not open. So someone that provides, I don't know what our, uh, what our unemployment rate in New Zealand is, I think it was about 6% or something at one point, but now, of course, we've got another 30,000 plus it's growing, going into that. So when you, because they're saying, oh, yeah, you're going to end up in employment. It's going to be horrible to be there. But those doors aren't even open. So how do people find themselves there? But the, the fallout from this, I, I, uh, my right brain is saying, you know, we've got to be very cautious and be mindful of the fallout from this the longer we stay in lockdown. And my left brain is saying, Hey, you know, uh, we got to think about not 
getting it again. We got to make sure that we're on top of this. How do you think? I mean, how do we balance it out? Um, so I want to go back to your first point about debt. And, you know, this has been kind of like a, a long running argument um, over centuries, really, around debt and, and, and these arguments about, you know, when a nation should go into debt and you know, what that debt is used for and um, going into to, to debt was effectively the way that um, countries kind of got out of, you know, the Great Depression back in the 1930s and um, at various times, you know, countries have... have um, have taken on lots of national debt. But it, but that raises a really good question is that it's kind of like, who's lending this money? Yes. So if, everyone, if everyone in the world is having to go into debt to, to pay mm. for the economic fallout of all of this, um, yeah. it's kind of like, who, who's who, who's lending all this money to everyone? And, and where and is it coming from? I mean, I know how much it And yeah. how much is this costing, right? So... Um, I, I think what we should actually do nationally is that every time any politician on either side of politics anywhere says, yeah, but debt is good, or they say debt is bad, doesn't matter. As soon as they say the word debt, what we should be asking is to say, yeah, but who, who are we going into debt to? Yeah. So I think that that's a really important question because um, at the moment all of that is very opaque it's very mm. kind of gray it's n n no one ever it, it, the only comments that are ever made are you know we either want to go into debt or debt is bad or we want to get out of debt and all these types of things but no one actually says well mm. yeah but who do we owe this money to and how come they've got so much money that yeah. they can lend every country in the world this money to bail them out now I think we should be going to them and saying, well, perhaps, you know, like it's a bit like people have been calling for, you know, like uh, uh, kind of like a, a debt jubilee, uh, an opportunity to kind of like clear the decks of reasonable levels of debt. It's a bit like, you know, when, uh, when, um, when you've had lots of businesses that have gone to the New Zealand government and said, hey, you know, we're going bankrupt, but we're an essential business. Can you give us some money, right? Mm. Well, um, that's great, but you know maybe maybe um, what we should do is to look at that a bit more widely and, and and think that maybe globally there needs to be some push to say we need to fix our economies and it makes no logical sense around and and I think if 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 the whole if the whole economic situation of the world would get worse if somehow or rather all of this global debt, right? Because we're mm. talking about global debt. Um, if all of this global debt, you know, just if someone just decided, what, well, okay, let's just wipe the slate clean. Let's just start afresh, right? What are the implications of that? What's going to go wrong, right? Like, so if you think about it, like, what what could possibly go wrong in New Zealand if New Zealand defaults on its national debt? Like, what's yeah. what? Now, there are actual uh, other implications, but, but that's because someone has made up these rules mm. around that when you go into debt, then there's certain consequences if you don't pay it back and you don't want to be one of those naughty countries, you know, because you get a bad credit rating. But anyway, moving past that, just putting that aside, we should always ask, so who is this that we're apparently in debt to? Well, well they, just, hold on to the thought, because... <laughs> Like in the U.S., uh, because of the comp you know company I'm part of over there, the company was offered 5K at a at a at a at a 10 percent in interest rate, right? So to re rejuvenate your company uh, business because it's a small company, it's not a huge company. Uh, it'll be a nice kick to you know to pay off some bills and stuff. Over three years, it'll be about 10 you know 10 percent. After that, the uh, uh, my question was. Well, what's going to be after that? And so it could, oh, it could go up to 25%. I said, well, no, because I had a say in it. So I was like, yeah, no, nah, I don't think we should take a, you know, take a loan now. Because the moment, you, because I learned the hardware myself, that the moment you take a loan, 
and you default on it, more interest gets on it. And I, you're talking about Jubilee. Uh, probably about maybe 15, 20 odd years ago for the student loan, right? Because they found it that like the interest rate just kept going higher and higher. And we, and we owed, owed the owed British royalty. I think it was, we, our thing somehow, our student loan was sort of part of that. Uh, because it was part of education, it was part of some somehow part of the Commonwealth uh, debt, and they just uh, I think um, I think it might have been Helen Clark who stepped in after you know people realizing that it wasn't just the poor people that were getting horrendous interest rates. It was every student was getting horrendous student. Um, anyone who's getting a um, student loan was getting impacted on impact impact. I'm not sure what the wording there is, but the interest kept getting higher. And so they said, well, hold on, we're going to wipe it. But then it was like this. Well, what about the people who didn't, who already have it, right? All the interest. So what about those guys? Are you going to wipe those as well? And so, you know, um, when you talk about debt, it's like those people who, like, it's like, we're going to pay you, we're going to give you this much to pay your mortgage. Well, what about the people that have been paying mortgage who don't get it? So... Yeah, that's why always, so the balancing act that they got to play and you're right where is the money coming from so i was going to put up the the south pacific right it's been like uh, fiji was just handed a whole lot of uh medical equipment from china medical equipment that was turned down by the netherlands by um by france and by italy by switzerland if i remember right and possibly germany as well so that sort of stuff and this is the what the worrying thing for me is if they thought that medical equipment was bad for them in the European country, and a, a poor nation like the islands, right? Cash strapped because of no tourism, business not being open, all that are getting these hand me down, let's say, medical equipment because China is able to send it to them and we aren't because we need our ones. And they can't, don't have their own ones in Fiji but they're getting these things. And so they're making a big deal. China's really, really helping the South Pacific right now. Whereas we're like, yeah, you know, don't worry about the Pacific. We got, we try to get ourselves sorted. And this is the thing, talk about land, who's landing. So the big, the big one out of this is China because they have these huge factories and you know, which billions of people, billions of workers who don't have to be paid the minimum wage like we do, right? what we consider a living wage at the moment, which hopefully gets higher for people, but for all of us. But uh, the thing is, they can pour out all this stuff and the goodwill that will come from that. But what happens when they decide, hey, the goodwill now that we've shown you during your pandemic and your need, uh, remember that casino we were thinking about building? And you guys were saying, well, no, it's it's our, you know, it's our, um, you know, it's national land that we can't really sell. It's owned by the government that, you know, that the people, you know, the lo local chiefs have given to the government to look after and take care of. We can't really give that to you. Ah, but, but remember how you guys, you know, we helped you guys out, the squeeze. See, that's what, for, that's my right brain always thinks about. It's like the squeeze that will come after someone gives you a gift because there's this thing about you know they talk about the whole indian giving right you know the whole you know um you want to take it back after a while and I, i've done that myself because after a while you get a smile so I've, I've, I've turned it now to think two three times before i give anything to think do you really want to give this gift or should you give something else that you can actually depart with you know uh, especially when it comes to pop culture it's like i wish i didn't but so you've got a nation that's gotten back on its feet and say like a whole country like China. And uh, because they were able to get back on earlier, they've got all the factories working and everything. They've got the medical uh, masks and PPEs and all that ready to go. But we don't, we're slowly doing it. And I know that a lot of us locally, I um, mean, I talked to Maggie the other day, she was saying that like uh, people were making uh, PPEs just, you know, mm. themselves and stuff and amazing work that they're doing. I know that everybody uh, who are, who's a sewer has been sewing masks and stuff, you know, just getting to grassroots and preparing this stuff. But in a, in a decade or so, if not less, somebody from somewhere is going to say, yeah, remember that, you, like you're saying, remember that money we lent you? 
it's time to pay up, you know, and I worry about that. And, um, and you're right about that as well. I think you, you raise an amazing point. Where is the money coming from? So how do we, how do we actually, you know, uh, make the government accountable to where the money's coming from? Because it reminds me of the part where there were, our Kiwi saver at one point was being invested in a, uh, a, uh, I think it was a tobacco company or something. And everybody went like, wait, what? You know, or there was another one which was in weapons and they were making landmines. You know, this is like about maybe five, ten years ago. And we we're like, no, we're not going to do that. Right. And so we, we held our, our banking bankers up. So how do we hold a government up to say, listen, where is this money coming from? And can you, you know, not get the money out? Like, I mean, I could do that to say a comp like a business that I'm part of. But how does a normal citizenship you know, uh, normal populists say to the government, hold on, tap on the shoulder. So where is it coming from? How do we, how does that happen? Well, you know, I suppose um, there's probably a couple of different avenues, you know, like maybe we should be, um, you know, th th this is really, uh, you know, we've got local MPs uh you know we should be um getting in contact with them and saying that if we're going into debt um to to get us out of you know the the, the challenges caused by this pandemic then who's lending us this money and, and who else are they lending it to and how much is this lending costing us and 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 why should they be profiting from our country in this great time of need you know we're asking this qu this question with inside the country of um you know who's profiting and why from this pandemic um uh and we're also asking the question of like like you say like we're asking these really amazing questions on one hand but there's this whole bunch of other questions that we're just not asking so we're asking the question to say you know what why why was our local you know um a uh, specific grocer um, spice shop. Why was that closed? Why why have they lost money? Why why are they potentially going bankrupt? Um, and how are they going to get helped? How is how is you know um, the families going to be helped? How uh, you know lots of other small businesses? How are tourism operators? How are exporters? And we're asking all these questions about how everyone is going to get help and what level of help they need and and what's the right sort of help that they deserve. Um, but no one's really asking the question about well, what about the people that don't need help? Mm. And 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 what's their contribution into this? Um, and also. Um, uh, you know, we had the Prime Minister fairly early on actually um, make some quite strong um, points around that uh, they did not feel that it was appropriate for profiteering to occur. Mm. So actually a lot of the supermarkets had to go and like quickly substantiate why it was, was that, mm. you know, you know, in one case it was like cauliflower was, you know, $8 in the supermarket. And they had yeah. to explain, well, actually, this would have happened anyway. It was... You know, and then, of course, if you add on to it, shortage of supply and so forth. Um, uh, and so, you know, we, we need to, um, you know, the questions of who is in need, but then who's also done really, really well out of out of this? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we should be asking that question outside of this, uh, outside of our country. And then I think that, you know, where it comes to things like international debt, um, it's kind of like the first... It's like the first level of disclosure that we should demand mm. is to say, who, 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 who are we borrowing this money from? Now, put that aside for a moment. And, you know, one of the things I, I, I think everyone's kind of pretty much worked out now, mostly, I think what everyone's kind of pretty much worked out is that if New Zealand had to be locked down for a really extended mm. period of time, then um, uh, New Zealand um, would have done, you know, quite well looking after ourselves. We've got sufficient food. Uh, we've got a huge variety of food. Um, 
you know, the other thing that you mentioned, right, and this is the other big looming problem because, you know, at the moment, you know, we import a lot of shit from other countries. Yeah. And, and you know, that is because the only reason why you can go into, you know, Kmart and buy yourself a $2 pair of jandals is because someone's getting like, you know, one cent to make yeah. those, you know? And um, then when you pile on all of the shipping costs and all of the production costs and all these things, you know, everyone, you know, everyone getting their mark up along the way is that, you know, someone somewhere is getting next to nothing um, so that you can buy $2 jandals. Now, also, like you said, we've got this other huge big problem, which is that, like, well, that's not sustainable either, that we have, you know, billions of people in the world um, you know, li living on this um, minute amount of money just so that we can have the privilege of buying, you know, a $2 T-shirt, right? Now, the reality is, is that we're really just pushing the cost of that, that item into the future. So at some point, you know, we need to come to grips with the fact that importing stuff cheap that mm. doesn't really give good value. Now, the, the reason why why this stuff is being imported is because once upon a time we either didn't need it we didn't want it or we made it ourselves and now yeah. we can't we have to import it um i remember um before the lockdown talking to someone that actually um was successfully growing rice yeah and they had found a way to grow rice in large quantities in new zealand and so we said to him i said well what, 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 you know, like, wouldn't that be great, you know, that we had rice crops in, in New Zealand if it's got this low environmental impact, we can grow it. And he goes, but I, I can't do it because, of course, I can't c compete with the imports. Mm. And so, you know, this is one of the challenges that we have is that, you know, we're, we've got this great opportunity to grow so many things in New Zealand, but the problem is is that we, we would rather... Um, transport it thousands of kilometers, thousands and thousands of kilometers from, from yep. where the rice is grown and import it into the country at, um, at a price that means that it's just like, like not economically feasible to do it in New Zealand. So mm -hmm. here's what I would be proposing is that I think what we need to do is to separate our imports and our exports from the money that circulates in our country. So for the goods and services that we provide to each other, that we buy from each other, that we sell to each other, that we need, that we consume, the food and everything, um, we, we, we should maybe, you know, literally um, have a local currency, you know, a, a, a literally a local currency that's about, you know, the movement and, and, and transport of, of goods. You know, You're talking about a green dollar. Yeah. Something, yeah. something like a green dollar. So... Um, so, like the market, so you go into the markets and the value, the value is basically if you can, uh, if it's, say it's a green dollar, it's a different uh, uh, amount in currency. If it's a normal Kiwi dollar, it's something else. So you can only spend the Kiwi dollar on imported um, stuff uh, and you can spend the green dollar on the local stuff. Yeah. But how would they, sort of, yeah, how would they, sort of conversion. yeah, how would they convert that though? Do you think? Well, you know, um, this is the thing, and 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 the reason why the conversion would be quite tricky, I would imagine, is because we've got this economy that, like lots of other countries, is just so enmeshed in the global scene of things. You know, like um, we're so in, enmeshed. Like, you know, look, the reality why why um, tourism is 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 um is a bad thing is is not just that people aren't spending money it's it's the fact that you know it's the same as like reverse exporting so tourism is like reverse exporting it's, it's like if you get us um uh, us citizens coming into new zealand then they're spending us dollars right you know, and we're, we're, we're swapping, you know, New Zealand dollars for US dollars. Um, so they're getting more money for their bank rather than getting the same amount of money that we get. Well, because we, the currency we, is yeah, like about 1.6 to our dollar right now. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, you know, like well, that's one of the reasons why countries like New Zealand are quite attractive to overseas mm -hmm. tourists because 
comparatively, you know, our dollar is, is very low. And, um, you know, if, if you go, if let's say you go to book a holiday, right. Mm. And, um, and you add up, you know, all of the, the flights and everything else. And you sort of go, but yeah, but what about, what about, um, dinners, right? What about meals? Like, you know, that's where you spend a lot of money often when you go on holidays. Mm. And then you go, no, it's okay because it's half price, dude. It's half mm. price. Yeah, it's half mm. price country. Uh, what's really interesting is that um, uh, the the kind of the, before all of this happened, you know, it, it was way cheaper for us to go to the US um, than for them to fly here for mm. for from the US it was it was quite expensive for them yeah our pay. dollars were getting getting pretty close compared to what it was you know like about a year earlier well it's not even that it's it's like you know the the airlines were kind of like making their money off flying people into the country and then um you know if you want to go to the US it was quite easy to get you know pretty cheap fare. so there's all these bizarre things that happen kind of like in the way that money moves and the way that you do conversions and and so forth um uh but you know like and we've kind of talked about this um previously is um you know like in new zealand like we've got a lot of uh trusts we've mm. got a lot of um co co cooperatives you know mm. um and, you know, maybe we need to, to really start to look at, um, you know, how we might be able to extend that and, and to have maybe more of a, you know, perhaps like New Zealand's own type of cryptocurrency, its own mm. kind of digital currency, which is a, a tradable currency. Um, and, um, uh, you know, and there's been lots of kind of attempts at this at, in the past um, around kind of like barter cards and so forth. So, yeah. Um, you know, if I if I come and buy some comics from you, then I I pay with say ten barter dollars. Yeah. Um, and and then you get my ten barter dollars, and then when you you know and so other people buy comics, and so you get all these barter dollars, and so when you go to pay your bills, you know you can go to the supermarket and spend your barter dollars, or you know, and maybe in the supermarket, maybe in the supermarket, you know, there's a distinction between, you know produce from New Zealand and produce from overseas mm. and produce from New Zealand. You can spend with your, your, your barter card um, mm. and with products, um, imported products, you know, you, you need to, to pay the price for what those are um, by converting, you know, your barter dollars into New Zealand dollars. And then you get more reflective of a, of an international price. Um, uh, you know, actually you might even um, recall this, um, uh, is that I, I remember um, uh, when I was in Fiji a um, number of years ago, uh, and, and it's quite a, quite a while ago, but it was when um, the Fijian government actually had published prices. Yeah. Good. And so, um, you know, there was like a fixed price to buy sugar. There was a fixed price for petrol. There was a fixed price for all these things. And that was because they were... Um, as a result of all of the upheaval in Fiji, is that they were trying to basically manage the this, this same type of situation, which is mm. you import a bunch of things and you've got to pay that in US dollars. Mm. And then you sell a bunch of things, which you usually sell in US dollars. And the difference between those, you know, either means that you're sitting pretty or you're in really big trouble. Um, mm. But but also it's a, it's a way of avoiding um, rampant... Um, uh, uh, price like price increases. It's a way of keeping a lid on prices. It's a way of um, keeping some sensible ways in the system. But then we've got to remember, right? Is that um, and you know there will be people who will be listening to this who will be in, in, in different economic circumstances. But maybe yeah. let's just for a minute talk to people who. Um, have been in a situation where they've been running a business, they've been making a lot of money, and they've now built their lifestyle, um, all of their investment properties, all of the other businesses that they've got shares in, and all of these things, right? Yeah. And so they've built the, their financial situation and their retirement and, and, and so forth um, 
around all of that you know we, we we need to we we need to address those types of things you know like if we're going to and and of course the finance minister actually alluded to this he he, he said you know we have like this once in a generation opportunity to fix some um core systemic problems in um the new zealand economy mm. And uh, it's going to be really interesting to see exactly what they mean around that. You know, there's been a lot of people that have been talking about the opportunity to introduce what they call a universal basic income. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it might be that, you know, they might have the opportunity to, to play with a, a lot of different ways of rethinking the economic situation from from what we've got today but you know that's going to be pretty challenging for some people because we've been living in this world whereby um uh and and without making it political and without making it kind of philosophical well, this is what i um, i worry about it's like a lot of people like they divide themselves along political lines and not stay neutral to what's good and what's bad and just try to see themselves you know in a rational way like like, not everybody, like, I mean, for me, I, I, I usually go, what is the first thing that comes in my mind, right? And then I'll sit back and go, wait, wait, think about that for a minute. Really think about it. how's it going to, what's the final, you know, what's the final impact of what you're going to do or what you're thinking about, how you're going to say it. And a lot of people just don't think about that. And, um, mm. you know, uh, even like, if you don't have someone to bounce it off, right? And, uh, you know, and because you don't have someone to give you the other um, other side of the brain, let's say, or the, you know, you sort of go on on your own little tangent thinking about, okay, this is what it is. I, I've got it right. And I think a lot of times, I mean, we, I mean, this is what worries me about the government is saying, you know, when we use words like control, we got to control this. I got to think, well, does that mean you're going to try to control people as well? Does that mean you're going to control uh, how people, how many people you're going to be allowing to go out there? Uh, you know, because we're talking about level two. Maybe Monday that we're talking about we're going to go to level two, and but they're actually controlling the economy while they do that. While they're controlling the economy, then they're controlling the people. And I find like this whole idea um, daunting because if are they having enough conversations with the left brain and the right brain, right? Both sides to go, hey, uh, you know, um, this is going to be a downfall from this, like like we're doing, right? We're saying, really, let's, let's really, hopefully, you know, they're doing that. But we're going, well, listen, this is what I think, but what do you think and how do you think and what is going to be the end result of that? Because everybody, like, you know, you can, uh, on the left, people are saying, well, those guys are really compassionate. They really care about people. And the, on the right side, they don't really care about people. They don't care. But they care about people in a different way in the sense of like, what happens if they're going to death? The left brain's going, oh, we care about them if they, get impact, if they go out and get catch it. And the balance there is like really, I, I, for me, I kind of think of that. I go, well, listen, how about we open all the businesses in level two, or even now, right, in level three, and go one by one. Or two by two, right? Two by two, let's go in, spend your money, back out. Because that one by one is really slowing the whole thing down. But not only that, but it's, it's affecting a lot, like we were talking about, a lot of smaller businesses that aren't able to be part of the essential thing. So the other thing is the cameras are doing really well. The doctors are doing really well. Uh, the power companies, the internet companies, you know, um, major grocers that we're saying are doing well. And... Uh, but there are, like I said, there's a lot of companies that are really, really hurting, smaller businesses, and even not even little companies, big, huge companies are hurting. Like you got Air New Zealand that's hurting. You got people like um, that do the whole um, rough, rough water rides and stuff. You know, the entertainment industry, Wellywood is hurting. Um, and so I think, well, you well, know, I think. Kind of raises the question of like, you know, to what degree um you know should we help so 
you know, like what's the difference? So, so here's three different types of business, right? Mm -hmm. um, one, one business is, is a business that's um, really well established. It's got a good customer base and um, they've been, you know, maybe shut down for, let's say, three months. Um, and then they'll be able to start back up again. They'll be hurting, but they'll be they'll be going well, right? Yeah. There'll be there'll be other businesses which um, uh, they were already really only running month to month. Yeah. You know, like the only reason why they survived was because each month they got enough money in to pay the next month's bills, yeah. and they, you know, mm. and then there were those businesses. They already were on the ropes, you know, like, um, and, and, you know, I think we got some pretty good insights into that. Um, yeah. Uh, even around Northland, whereby in places like Whangarei, there's so much empty um, office space and commercial yep. space already because um, it's just, you know, it's pretty what? hard out there, right? Um, you've got high rents, you've got a shift in the way of people consuming things and not going out and doing a lot of retail anyway. And and there's, you know, there's always been doubts about kind of brick and mortar and retail in the digital world anyway as to how long, how, how long, like, you know, there were already big questions around how long, you know, your average kind of business, you know, shop front was going to last anyway. The, the, the resurgence in some of that has only really be, been happening in, you know, uh, sort of like, Various places, particularly larger cities, where you get the opportunity for your small little boutique wine bar or your small little boutique bakery or your, you know, it's or your small little boutique bookshop, right? But overall, you know, a, a lot of retail was already in trouble. But if a business is, has not been run, being run well, right? If it was never running well, or or some businesses were just bad businesses, like. That makes mm. no sense. Like, well, my know, question there is, like, should these bad businesses be allowed to get relief? So if you've got all these empty shops, do you think some of, some of them will go, ah, oh, you know what, uh, we're out of this? And this is what we've seen that overseas as well, that some people, and they will claim that because of the situation of lockdown, we've lost a lot of money. Yeah. You know, and how do you find out that they ha they aren't? I mean, how is the government going to police the fact that these people are asking for relief when they have been closed for two, three years? But they're going to claim that, oh, it's because we, we, were, we were going to get someone in. But because of the situation, we're not able to. And this is, uh, and, you're, and you were talking about earlier about like month to month. Now, comic shops mm -hmm. are month to month. And the impact of the comic shop and uh, mainstream comics closing in, in America, and because I pay, you know, it's part of my industry, a lot of businesses straight away were closed, right? They couldn't open. But the other thing was they can't open again because they realized we are month-to-month -month business. And because of the month-to-month -month business, they're gone. Like probably about 25% of them will be closed. They will never open again. And the same thing will happen in our, in, in our region with Northland. And I, I just, you know, it's just, it's because the credit goes around. Like, I mean, you know, that one person that puts a dollar down, right? That dollar gets cut up so many ways to so many different com companies. Mm. And I heard, you know, there was told about credit a few years back, maybe about 10, 15 years back. And I was like, I never thought of it like that. The whole idea of how credit moves from so, one so, place. So here's, a, so here's a really interesting connection just back to the debt question, mm -hmm. right? So so what you don't want to do is let, let's say we, you know, have this $5 billion pie that we could carve up and, mm -hmm. and give out to people. And in fact, let, let, let's, let's just say, you know, we've got a $500 billion pie pie that we have yeah. whereby yeah. you can spend it on anything you like you can so let's say the government had 500 billion dollars and they can say right we can we can part, pass it out to citizens we could pass that out to businesses um you know whatever right here's the thing right what you don't want to do is to end up in the situation where the majority of that five billion dollars that you've given out to people that you've gone into debt for. So you go into debt to get the $500 billion. Then you give it out to everyone. 
and then the majority of it then goes outside the country like that would be ludicrous like yeah. that would be mind-blowingly ludicrous that that we the country goes into debt to have money to invest in the economy and then the bulk of that money then leaves the country and that that would be insane and the way that that would happen would be because where businesses have got foreign ownership and the profits transfer overseas, mm. um, or if there's ways for overseas businesses to extract capital. And so it looks like, um, you know, the money's staying in New Zealand, but actually what they've done is they've actually pulled other money out mm. from an accounting point of view. It could be that, um, you, you know, we, we get this binge on on imported goods. Yeah. Um, like so so these are the the types of questions about saying well if we're going into debt then how do we make sure that the money stays in new zealand you know and, and if we're going into debt for it and if we're paying for the for going into debt then how do we keep it in the country but then the other growing problem that we've had and you know some people would say we were already there other people would say you know we weren't there what I will say is this, is that if you look across all of the very similar economies like New Zealand, there was a really, really huge problem emerging, which is that, um, and, and, and then just to kind of bring in, you know, an aspect of, you know, how it gets politicised is that, you know, there's often been this kind of thinking of saying is that, you know, if you're homeless and on the streets, then, you know, that's your problem. You've made a lot of bad life choices. Yeah. Okay, well, let's just park that for one moment. Then on the other hand, we've got this thing that says, well, if you're a billionaire, then, you know, you, well done. You know, you must be, you know, you know, in that small bunch of amazing humans that mm. are so brilliant, so genius, or, or perhaps you've been really lucky, or perhaps you've actually, you know, been, been quite criminal. Yep. But anyway, you became a billionaire. Something special happened that got yep. you to be a billionaire. We don't have many of those in New Zealand. No. Um, but we've got a lot of millionaires. Like, you know, you only need to take a drive around Northland to suddenly realise is that there's a lot of big estates and private properties mm. and, you know, houses and properties worth millions, if not tens of millions of dollars. Um, and, like, good on them. Fantastic. They've done mm. well. You know, they're, they're a freak of human nature. But in the middle, mm. what's been happening is that in the middle, we've had this... Yeah, where there's high wealth concentrated in certain areas, mm. there's extreme poverty in some areas, and let's agree that maybe that's because of some people's bad life choices. Yeah, but there's been this increasing group of people that are not stupid, they're not unintelligent, they don't want to work hard, they're not mm. creative. Um, maybe they've been unlucky name all those things, but that group of people has been getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the finance minister made made reference to that group of people today, whereby, the, the, um, you know, this is a really huge social problem that's going to blow up in Australia in the not too distant future. Yeah. You know, New Zealand's quite fortunate because New Zealand has been, this particular government has been um, trying to address some of the problems that, would make this worse yeah but in australia like now you have the situation that for a, a lot of families that like you know and if you take a a, a a seemingly typical family of a couple of income earners with some kids yeah. like you know both of them have to work full time and they're still not really making enough to get by and so yeah. people have been getting into increasing debt and everything's being bought on debt you buy your television on debt you buy your car on debt and then of course because of the way that because traffic's so bad then you've got to get two cars because you know you can't do a smart thing like interchange cars or public transport hasn't been invested in so that's not working well you've got to you know like all of these things have been making it more and more difficult for more people so we have more people like the average is now no longer average the average is almost the majority the majority of people who are intelligent smart hard working they love their families they love their communities 
but they're just every month they're falling more and more behind and and that's what he was meaning in his speech is that like we were reaching this point whereby we were getting to a situation whereby if you look at a lot of the economic numbers there was no way that we were going to be able to continue the way that we were going for much longer before actually the whole thing imploding on itself um and we you know this is not the way that we you know want to live you know we don't want people to live in a way anymore whereby they feel like they're just on this treadmill they're working as hard as they can mm. and yet they're still no better off at the end of each month and each month is getting worse um so you know like that's why i think he he, he made reference to the fact that we've got an opportunity to fix, for, mm. fix this on a big scale um but it's going to be really challenging because you're going to have lots and lots of people that have got different economic views mm. um you're going to have some people that you know feel that it's quite okay for a small number of people to have huge amounts of wealth and the bulk of the population you know to be struggling you know and um you know those are the real types of tough things that you know we're going to be facing into hopefully uh yeah hopefully we i think you know, we've got, yeah, you're right. We've got opportunity to really think about a lot of things for the country. I mean, like at the start, I was like, okay, you know, it's a good time to think about which local business we want to, you know, invest in instead of investing in some, you know, let's say overseas companies like Apple, right? Let's just say instead of investing in Macintosh, invest in local uh, companies. So like one of the local companies, um, that's got a like um, Maggie mentioned. I can't remember the name of it exactly. That's like Zoom, like a video conferencing thing that locally created. So what you know, there could be an opportunity for us as a local, you know, to invest in that without it being like a public share company where you actually privately invested into the company. Mm -hmm. I mean, even with us, I mean, like with Plunge, I was like, okay, I've got ten thousand shares. Here's we're going to share these shares around. And then we're going to like make sure that we don't actually, you know, public become a public uh, sharing company where anybody can invest in it. But our friends and family could say, well, here's a couple hundred and we invest in to make this work. And I think the great thing about that, like with this opportunity is we can do that. We can really think about what we want to invest in. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, we have got some great local companies. I mean, you know, um, you got like Carter Holt Harvey with the forestry. Um, hopefully, I think that's not owned by overseas now. <laughs> you know, you got the fisheries and stuff like that. Um, you got the agriculture, dairies, and especially farms. I, I think we need to get back into investing in our own farms, get it out of other people's hands because once those go into somebody else's hand, they will never sell it for what we what they bought it for. And that's a problem that I had seen in the Pacific is when they start, well, put a hotel here, we'll put a thing there. It's like now there's no place to have go to the beach because it's all private i actually got kicked mm. off a beach in fiji at one time so you know so i understand you know when you're <laughs> when you're actually from the place of your birth and you can't go to that beach because now it's owned by private hands you know and that's going to be the same thing here as well if we start selling off all our beaches and stuff like that i think um i'll leave it there but in closing do you want to say anything else and because i've only got you for an hour so and we'll catch up another time. I'm looking forward to another talk in about another week to see how we come out of level two. Hopefully you can join us again, but is there anything you want to finish off of? I, I really think um, it's a great opportunity for everyone to uh, just, you know, if everyone's been so awesome through the pandemic in doing things that they've not necessarily agreed with that they haven't necessarily felt comfortable about and that has you know got some potentially really long-term impacts for them um i think you know let's let's you know almost like from the pandemic point of view we we, we put kind of our our sort of political sort of stuff to mm. one side um and i think what we should do is perhaps lean into a, a, a really good national debate um, that is no longer a politicized one, that's no longer a, um, an election-based debate because, you know, as the finance minister said, 
and the reality is is that we're going to be um, paying paying the price in so many different ways for this pandemic for a very very long time. Yeah, um, we we have the system whereby you know um, we we go to the polls, we go to elections, but in a in a time frame that is much smaller than mm. what the legacy of all of this will resolve into. And I think this is a really great time for a, for like a national hui that that we really come together and have a really strong national debate about our future, about globalization, about how we get through this now, and about where 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 we think our nation is actually going. And and you know, let's not just continue to stumble forwards. Let's work mm. out strategically where, where we think our place in the world is, how we're going to support our Pacific neighbours, um, and to chart a, a long-term course rather than just make um, these stumbling moves forward to carry on um, as we were. Because um, if it hadn't have been the pandemic, you know, the, the, wor the world, and I think we're still yet to sort of see all, all of the ramifications of this, but... But the world was was financially in a really really bad position in the first place. Um, um, in a way, the this pandemic has provided an opportunity for each country to do a lot of soul searching, including soul searching economically. Um, and let's take that opportunity and let's um, let's put politics aside and, and and let's all sit down and and talk more around what country do we actually want to be. Excellent. I mean, you're right. Um, I don't have anything to add to that because I think that's basically your, um, I think middle of the road and not get political about it is going to be the best way to deal with it and helping, helping us all get through this, you know, uh, big or small, uh, unemployed, unemployed, rich or poor. I think if we are concerned about the whole thing of we're in this together, then we're going to have to be in this together. Otherwise it's just, hypocrisy and wordplay and um and that's what worries me is the, is the words and not the actions and i think hopefully that we can be very active in helping our local businesses especially when you know with me i hope my hope is that we help our local arts and the creative community because you know we've realized that the digital platform is if we can really come out of this and really invest in our local digital you know community and the creative arts i think um We'll have something for the future for them, for the tourists to come to, right? Uh, instead of, you know, spending big, big dollars on something that's not us, but spend big, big dollars on something that is us. I think that is going to be more impactful and local investment because the thing is, I think um, I'm all about walk the talk. And I think um, if you can't walk it, stop talking about it, you know? Uh, and, uh, if you know, and the whole thing is that, if if we want our, you know, if we want our leaders to walk the talk, then they must think very carefully of where they're going to walk. And you're right. Mm -hmm. Where is the money coming from? What are we getting into debt? And how are we going to get out of it? Because when that arm squeeze comes, you know, when that burn comes, I want to make sure that it's not going to impact us too well, too much. You know, it's not going to be like, oh, it's now 25% interest on that. Because guess what? You know, it was 10% then, but get now, after three years, we want 25%. And, who, yeah, landing and who's going to do the squeezing? Any politician, any politician, no matter what side of politics they're from, any politician that can't explain who we're in debt for mm. and to be able to justify why they should be profiting on the debt of our country and our people, then um, they just don't deserve to be a politician. They really That's don't. It. Yeah. And and I mean that's the same thing. Like like with the you know was it the um, finance minister went for a walk right outside his thing. It's like the same thing. It's like if if you if you expect us to obey the rules, you must obey the rules as well. There is no there is no us and them anymore. Because you, because you know, politicians keep saying we're all in this together. Then, well, treat. What would you do with them? Put them in jail. <laughs> Send them to court. 
because you would do that with me, right? You would charge me, you would make me pay. So charge him and make him pay. And I think that's that's the whole business of walking to talk. And uh, because I'm sure that everybody rightfully had an uproar about that. But that's, of course, that's in the past. But hopefully when we go out, she will hold him accountable because I would and be held accountable. So I'd expect, and you would be held accountable, right? As an, you know, and so, yeah. Would it be a great example of uh, Tita Reedy in, in, in practice, wouldn't it? That, you know, that if a government minister breaks the lockdown law, then, um, you know, he should get the, the same punishment for yeah. a similar offence um, uh, that, you know, Amari got somewhere, you know, like, yeah. you know, the, you know, the person, the, 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 the coloured person that got, you know, the, the harshest penalty, right, yeah. for going to the beach, you know, yeah. then the government minister should get the same. And I'll tell you what, you'd probably get an uplift in this sort of guy, like, well, you know, like, we'll just let yeah. you off. This well, thing. it doesn't even have to be um, any coloured person at all. It'd be like just whoever, like, any person who the highest, like, um, you know, arrested thing because of that, then it's got to be equal. It's got to be a, it's got to be a le level playing field. Um, otherwise, it's not, it's not, uh, you know, you just, this, uh, you're not actually being part of the, you know, we're in this together movement yeah. um, and belief system. And, and yeah, and Fiji was, Fiji did that, right? They, they were like one rule for everyone. And the ministers acted up, boom, arrested. Here we're like, oh, yeah, we, we, we gave him a warning and stuff. I'm like, hmm, yeah, not a good example if you want to be a leader. If you can't lead by example, you shouldn't be a leader. But by the same token, you know, we, we, all, we all make mistakes. And, yeah. um, uh, you know, we, we, were, we were all in new different circumstances um, through through this lockdown period. And and so I actually also think that, you know, we should um, also grant a lot of compassion as well. Um, but once again, you know, this is this mm. is the challenge we face. Is, um, uh, we've got different outcomes for different people, but also there's different background stories. And so, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of untangling to do um, but perhaps you know, whilst we've got this opportunity and we've got this time, um, maybe maybe this is the sort of stuff that we should all be talking about more about what sort of society that we actually want to live in. You know, New Zealand is 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 not only an amazing country; it has an amazing diversity of people. Um, this is a very special place in the world mm. that um, is has got so many advantages. Um, and we should be really looking at how we might be able to, to utilize that for, um, you know, the benefits of, of future generations. That's probably just the one thing that I have not heard very much about, which is a lot of forward thinking, you know, a lot of, um, you know, what does this mean for future generations? Um, well, how... I have we discussed that on the net because I think uh, I've got a, um, a gaming thing to talk to um, another person on. But the other thing is that I enjoy our talks, and I think bec because of how you think, and I think it's, it's amazing to sit down with you every time we do this because you know I get my mind blown about what you know how you how you look at how you know get, uh, like from being a you know finance person and how how it impacts our society and. And the whole idea of being able to talk to so many different people is amazing. And um, so let's make, let's do that for next time. So how do, yeah, the next generations. Thank you. Thanks. It's always a pleasure. It's always awesome. a pleasure. Hey, guys, thank you for joining us. Um, hey, I know money is not every, you know, I mean, everybody needs to use money, but it's um, finance is not everybody's thing. But sometimes because of where we are, we got to stop and think about that. And uh, because if you get too busy, all you think about is card, bank, card, spend, spend. And you don't even think about where it's going, how it's impacting our society, because it doesn't grow on trees. Somebody is making, picking that apple, sending it to the, you know, to the factory, factory sending it to the truck, trucks getting to the, to the store. 
and then getting it with your money. And so there's all these steps financially that impacts all of us behind the scenes. And um, a lot of people don't understand that because they're not used to seeing farms. They're not used to how things are made or how fruit is picked. And sometimes those people who are picking those fruits are getting less than the minimum wage. And so we need to discuss all that going forward. And so, yeah, we'll talk about that in the next future, the next future generations and how they're gonna be impacted by our, the debt that we're going to be carrying because of this. So thank you once again, Stuart. Thank you, my friend. And we'll catch you in the next one. Thank, thank you. you.